Okay, so we're just doing introductions now. Uh, Lou, we just go across. Me. Sure. So I'm Lou Zwire. I'm I'm in California in the U.S. Uh, I'm a filmmaker and an educator, uh, teaching at the high school and college levels. Um, I have a long history of teaching communication skills and conflict resolution. I have a background in nonviolent communication and teaching leadership, uh, kind of personal transformation work. Um, and I'm currently working on a documentary about nonviolence. And I've been working with Edwin, Edwin for about a year. Uh, and I've started lo uh, local public dialogue work in where I live here in Petaluma. Okay, uh, Carolina. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Karolina Kubiak. I'm calling from Poland, uh, north of Poland, Central Europe. I live in Gdańsk on the Baltic Sea. Um, I can say about myself that, well, I'm one of the uh, Edwin team. <laughs> and uh, I am politically engaged in some left side of the political scene in Poland with nonviolent methods, nonviolent means. And actually I just began cooperate with Extension Rebellion here in Poland in our city. There is a group and we start we're starting right now our actions. Okay, thanks Paul. Hi everybody, um, I'm Paul, I'm from St Albans in the UK, just uh, north of London. Um, I'm yeah, heavily involved with Extinction Rebellion, so from the beginning just helping out with the citizens assemblies, people's assemblies, and um, I've been involved locally and nationally in the UK, involved with an organisation called Thinking Box, which I founded six years ago, which runs local uh, deliberative uh, sessions and um, you know, gatherings to talk about things of importance, but also we have a pillar of emotional growth. So very often talking about empathy and having those kind of conversations there. And that's something that we've always had the dream of scaling and making available to everybody, which obviously I'm working with Indra and Sam heavily with the Future Democracy Hub, which is one of the things that we're creating to try and get what you're doing and what we're all doing out into more wider circles and um, get those conversations going it's very exciting very exciting stuff so delighted to be here meeting you it's so cool that we've got people from all over the world <laughs> how cool is that very much that's me all right sam yeah hi everyone it's really nice to be here i've been talking to edwin off and on for about a month i'm an acupuncturist i'm based in suffolk in the uk my relationship with Extinction Rebellion really started in February and then went to London. It was quite life-changing. Um, had the <clears throat> opportunity to get involved um, and quickly joined a team with Indra and Paul and that's been really fantastic and very exciting. And um, yeah, just getting to know all these incredible tools that are out there for bringing people together, which I really feel uh, so much that it's the right place for me to be working and also i feel a great sense of hope and optimism when i when i work with this stuff so really nice to be here great thanks uh indra hi uh so i'm indra adnan and i am the co-initiator of a new political platform called the alternative uk and i'm working together with sam and paul for the extinction rebellion uh, designing these future democracy hubs. Um, my own background is that I'm a journalist and then uh, I've been trained in conflict transformation, but now I'm also a psychotherapist trained in the human givens model of emotional needs and emotional capacities. So I'm very interested in the big picture of emotional needs being at the core of a new politics, actually. Okay, uh, Bill? Uh, yeah, my name is Bill Filler. I'm in Northern California. I've been working with Edwin for about a year. Um, right now, lately, I've been going out to uh, farmer's market and nearby in Davis, listening to people, 
um, and I really enjoy that. Um, I'm a former special education teacher dealing with at-risk kids for incarceration or hospitalization. And over my 37 years, uh, I've learned the importance of listening and making people feel heard and how that's transformative, transformative uh, to their uh, behavior and their outlook on the world. And I want to spread this so that we all can benefit. Okay, thanks, uh, April. Hi, um, I'm April. I'm based at the moment in a beautiful blue sky, sunny West Wales. And it's noting because it's normally raining here, so blue sky on a solstice is very beautiful. Um, I've been involved with Extinction Rebellion before it was Extinction Rebellion. I was part of Rising Up when it began. I am um, have been woven into it since it started and I am the external coordinator for the conflict resilience team of which uh, there are some other people here from that team somebody else who encouraged me to come along on this call so uh, thank you very much and I'm interested to learn thank great you. thanks uh, Carrie Hi everyone, I'm Kerry. I'm based in London. Um, I've been sort of circling and hearing of Edwin's, the things that Edwin gets up to for a few years and, and always appreciated and uh, uh, yeah, enjoyed the um, culture of empathy initiatives. Um, I set up my own project called Empathy Injection a few years ago. My um, background is in nonviolent communication and um, looking particularly at uh, working with conflict and building systems to deal with conflict. Um, so I'm, uh, I've been involved in, with Extinction Rebellion in setting up a de-escalation um, initiative for the major actions um, and also working with April in conflict resilience as well. And really, as we kind of um, look through the, the range of options that are up for people when, when conflict happens, I'd really like to see empathy circles as one of the options that, that people can turn to. Um, I see it as a very sustainable form of working through conflict. So curious to see how we, how we get on today. Um, I won't be able to stay for two hours. So I'm just sort of naming that now at some point I'll need to go and cook dinner. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, Roz, is it through? Uh, hi, yeah, Roz. Um, yeah, firstly, just uh, to apologise, I'm on a train that I couldn't move. So if I pop in and out of signal, just carry on and I'll just be silent and listen mostly to avoid um, disruption. Um, so, yes, so I'm in the southwest in England and I've done a lot of organising for Extinction Rebellion here since October um, and then. Uh, national um, part of the affinity group support network. Um, my background's in facilitation and uh, yeah, I've had an interest in nonviolent communication for, for a long time. And now, yeah, sort of um, wondering, ha have wonderings about um, nonviolence and extinction rebellion and what it might potentially look like to have a, a central um, work circle just looking at nonviolence in all its kind of depth and overarchingness. So that's a, a, a wondering that I've been chatting a bit with April and um, Kerry about. Hmm. Okay, well, great. So uh, for this meeting, there's uh, actually I've put in the, I should have put that in earlier. There's a, a link to our Google working doc. And if you're able to access it, you can always use this. This is uh, the central repository for for this uh, project and it's on our agenda is on page five. So I thought for the this meeting if, if it works for everyone we have two parts. So the first part we're, we would do an empathy circle to actually practice it for about 45 minutes. Uh, we divide into two groups and, and um, uh, actually uh, practice it and our topic would be how might we incorporate empathy circle practice into the XR community 
And uh, then we would come back after 45 minutes, come back into the main group, into the central group here, and then just have open uh, discussion about it. So um, we wanted to, so first uh, introduce how to do an empathy circle, kind of the, the practice of it. So we just have the, you know, the visceral experience of it. Um, oh, hey, Tony, you hearing us? Do you hear us, Tony? Hello. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, we hear you. We just had done introductions. If you'd like to give a short introduction. Hi, sorry I'm late, guys. I just came from a meeting. Um, I'm Tony. Uh, I'm not really sure. I'm not ready. You carry on and okay, I'll we'll carry on. Uh, so, yeah, so does that sound okay? Just we'll start with that, uh, with uh, an introduction, so get a thumbs up, or I guess it, <laughs> yeah, okay, great. So, uh, Lou, would you explain how to do the empathy circle, like the practice? And Sure. So, typically, an empathy circle, uh, we do it with four or five people. Uh, I've done it with up to uh, a dozen people, but the bigger the bigger the circle, the longer it takes, you know, to for everyone to speak. So a good size is four to five people, um, uh, and you, the idea of the circle is so there's so there's some structural elements of the circle that make it different than just like listening to each other. So one is that. Uh, we have timed turn taking in the circle. Typically we do like three minute turns and, uh, but in a more contentious circle, like if it's really a charged topic, then you might do five minute turns. And that the turn, time turn, turn taking uh, forces some mutuality in the circle. So no one person, you know, dominates the conversation or not a couple of people. So you usually start the circle by one person volunteering to go first. And before the speaker starts speaking, they select someone else in the circle to reflect back what the speaker is saying. So everyone in the circle is paying attention to the speaker and listening to the speaker, but it's the reflector's job to re reflect back what they're saying. So during their three minutes or five minutes or whatever, the speaker speaks and they pause occasionally to let the reflector reflect back. And if the speaker's not doing that, the reflector can say, can you hold on a second? you know, let me reflect back what I'm hearing so far because it's hard to, you know, hold everything that the person is saying. Um, and uh, yeah, so the reflector flex, reflects back, you know, the essence of what they hear the person saying. And, um, and if it's not correct, you know, the person can, the speaker can correct them. And at the end of their time, um, that, and the speaker feels heard, uh, then the listener becomes the speaker and they select another person in the circle who has not um, listened yet uh, to be the reflector. And because of that structural element that the speaker becomes the list, I mean, the listener becomes the speaker and they select another person who hasn't listened yet, the, li the speaking and the listening go around the circle. And so everybody gets a chance to speak and be heard. And then when you, when it, you re complete one round, you just continue with another round and the person can select, you know, anyone else in the circle. So the only real requirement is that, you know, when you're selecting someone, you select someone that hasn't had a chance to listen yet so that the listening moves around and it's not, and it doesn't go back and forth. So there's another structural element that the speaking doesn't go back and forth between two people because they're picking each other because they want to respond to each other. And that creates a lot of space in the conversation for reflection on what's being said and reflection on what other people want to say. And that kind of shifts the dynamic of the conversation, even when it's very charged. Um, usually if a circle does have a facilitator and the facilitator's role is to make sure that the process is being followed because people will forget the process or sometimes people get really charged and they have trouble doing the process. And it's also the reflector, the facilitator's role to interrupt the speaker if they're going on for too long and the listener is too shy 
to stop them. So the facilitator's monitoring that and doing that. And the other role the facilitator does is um, if the person's not really reflecting, if the re reflector is not really reflecting, but they're responding to what the person is saying or giving their own opinion or evaluating or something other than just reflecting back what they're hearing, um, then the facilitator would do something about that. Ask, remind the person what they're there to do. And the, if the person is really struggling with reflecting, then the facilitator would uh, maybe do a reflection, uh, do the reflecting as a way of modeling what, what, um, what we're talking about. Um, another important rule of the circle is um, a circle can have no topic, like people just talk about whatever they want to when it's their turn, or the circle can have a topic. But one of the important rule of the circle is that you don't have to stick to the topic, that it's actually the conversation is most meaningful if you talk about what's alive in you at that moment, what's really important that's been stimulated in you or that you're thinking or feeling uh, and that you don't have to just stick to the topic. Um, that really keeps the circle alive. I think those are the major points. I don't know if I've left anything out, Edwin, if you wanna add something or Bill. Sounds good to me. I uh, just, I don't know if you mentioned, I was trying to do breakout rooms here. Uh, it's if, if, you're, if you're speaking, you want to pause periodically so that the person can reflect back, as well as if you're the listener, you can, you can uh, ask for a pause, like it's becoming a lot, you know, to kind of remember and be, be aware because, oh, can, I, can you just pause, let me reflect back what I'm hearing. So those are kind of two aspects. Uh, so we just want to kind of just jump into it and actually do it. Usually we do, uh, this is what we would call an empathy cafe, which is, you know, 10, 20 people. And then we divide into smaller groups. Uh, usually we divide into groups of four because we want the participants to have a lot of time to speak as well as to be engaged. So it's, there's a lot more engagement with four and you have a variety of perspectives. Uh, but we'll do actually a little bit bigger groups here. I think it'll be five and six um, for this. And then, so we'll do about 45 minutes in the empathy circle and then come back and, and sort of debrief. Uh, do you, Edwin, do you think we should do three minute turns? Oh yeah, that's what I was gonna say, three minute turns because of the size of the group. So Lou will be facilitating one, I'll, I'll do the other. So let me, you'll get to go into rooms like, uh, right now. Okay. Um, so we can get started. I'll do the timekeeping and our topic is uh, how might we bring uh, empathy circles into the XR and you can talk about anything or, that you would like to and perhaps Actually, someone would like I to... can keep time. Oh, you can you... keep time three minutes. Yeah. Terms? yeah. Okay, great. Thanks. Yeah. So uh, if somebody wants to start, you can speak to me and uh, just to model it. Um, if any, any thoughts, whatever comes up for you, whatever is alive, anyone can start. So just for clarity, Edwin, you're, you're saying that the topic is how can we bring in empathy circles to XR right. and, and at the same time we can talk to anything that's alive in us. Right, uh -huh. exactly. Both. Yep. Thank you. Oh, so yeah, since you're starting, I can, so what I'm hearing is you have a question. You wanted some clarification of, of uh, the question and it was uh, that you can talk about anything you want as well as uh, how to bring empathy circles into the, into XR. Is there more? All right, I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. Um, yeah, there is more. And I'm just taking a moment just to kind of feel into it. Um, yeah, um, I guess the the I'll stay on topic for a little. Uh, I'll stay on topic. Um, uh, yeah, I guess I'm curious yeah. and w wondering how to bring this practice in to local groups uh, or to national working groups. Um, 
uh, yeah, that that's the question, and um, kind of knowing that kind of do it, doing something face to face would be really helpful for people to really experience it live. Um, so kind of that kind of requires people to go to local groups. It, it requires a kind of person power to go to local groups and to, um, you know, introduce the idea and create some space to, to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm here. Oh, getting some feedback. Uh, if we could, everybody could mute who's not. Okay, so, uh, so uh, you're you're wondering how to bring empathy circles into into XR, and you're you're I'm hearing that it's uh, you think it's going to be best to do it in person and have people experience uh, empathy circles in in person. So it's that personal connection that's going to be important. Yeah. And and as I say that, I, I, I connect to some mourning in me around my personal capacity as well, because I don't have that much free evening time because I'm a single parent with a child. So, I, yeah, it just, just a bit of mourning in me comes up. So it's like, and what can I do? You know, how can I support this? You know, so that's just naming that as it's there. Mm, so feeling a bit of mourning uh, because uh, of, the, of your time limitations and just, yeah, just noticing that and wanting to address, speak to it. Yeah, yeah. And, and also, you know, there's, there's also a kind of um, mourning or maybe it's more, more of a fear around how much needs to happen within XR, how much kind of building of systems needs to happen. So a kind of fear of a potential, you know, competition around time and, you know, wanting to get, there's so many things that need to, to be discussed. There's so many, so many processes and procedures that need to be sort of set in place. Uh, it's just a fear of that sort of, you know, the work in making, making that happen, putting it on the table, being heard, actually, the, the, the work in being heard. So there's a, a, sense of, oh, a sense of time, uh, getting quite a bit of feedback. So um, there's a, so it's a, it's a concern or actually a fear about all the time that it's going to take to set up all these systems, and just it sounds like maybe a bit of an overwhelming you know fear of, of what what's involved in that and the time limits for for doing it. Do you feel heard? Okay, then thanks. And I'll uh, speak to Carolina. Just uh... Uh, okay, I'm listening. Okay, um, yeah, I'm really excited about the empathy circles. So, for you know, from my experience of you know having worked with you know on empathy and you know trying to create a more empathic society as a, a sort of a first step, easy first step that people can easily engage in. I see the uh, empathy circle as a real good practice for that. Uh, just, you know. So let me reflect. Uh, I don't speak English very well, so I need to pause, I need you to pause. <laughs> um, well, um, you are excited about creating, as I, what I'm hearing you saying that you are excited about uh, creating kind of uh, empathic society and uh, you kind of discover that uh, empathy circle gives people kind of first step to, 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 to create connection. Yeah. It's very simple. And uh, we can do it online too, like we're doing here. Like we can, we need to sort of build capacity to have people who are able to facilitate a circle, which you know, doesn't take too much, but it's good to have the experience. Uh, and it can be, be done online like we're doing here is a way to start building capacity. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying, uh, uh, the, the empathy circle might be done uh, through online uh, applications and as we do uh, and as we are doing now and uh, what you want to create is kind of uh, you call it capacity kind of uh, build the team of facilitators 
and being facilitator is quite easy, simple thing to learn. And so you think about building kind of group of people being able to, to, to do, to facilitate empathy circle, as mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah. Is it and Lou has been doing that where he's been training a group locally uh, in Petaluma, where he lives. So he has a group of 10 people who are sort of learning and practicing it. And then they actually do it in a cafe uh, and you know, they have tables. And so it takes a little bit you know, for people to learn the practice, but it can be done online and in person too. So what I'm hearing you saying that uh, what we're doing here is online, but uh, low, uh, the facilitator of the, the other group, uh, the other room, uh, is uh, practicing uh, empathy circle in person, in so to speak reality, not virtually, but uh, uh, in reality, uh, they meet in uh, Petaluma in California, in cafe, and there is about uh, 10 people who already participate in organizing mm -hmm. those empathy circles. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, oh, time, I feel heard. So, <laughs> I'm sorry. No, that's well, good. We have, uh, we have this rule that uh, it doesn't mean you have to stop in the middle of the sentence. You can and what your thought, your ideas. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I uh, choose maybe uh, I, Tonya, uh, Ant Tony, Antonia, uh, you are next on my uh, screen. Uh, okay, I put my time. Uh, well, as you see, I'm from Poland. And, uh, well, I'm politically engaged uh, on some left. Uh, wing of our political scene and um, what is very important for me is nonviolent methods, nonviolent means to achieve goals. I really believe in this role of Gandhi uh, to achieve goals in a nonviolent way. I stop that. Um, so you um, you identify very much with the left and with Gandhian nonviolence, that's important to you, nonviolence. Yeah. And actually, I perceive empathy circle. Uh, that's how I in got interested in uh, empathy circle because I see it as a, a form of nonviolence, nonviolent tool. That was what was important to me that this is kind of method of creating connection especially with my enemy or opponent and uh, the chance to, to, to communicate and to build relations. So we don't fight, we rather talk, um, mediate maybe. So empathy circle is for me a part of nonviolent action and nonviolent tool. That's how I see that. Mm -hmm. So you're interested in empathy uh, circles because of your interest in nonviolence, which you see as a way to um, uh, connect and communicate with your enemy or an, oppo an opponent and to mediate um, and to have these conversations. Yeah, and we have very difficult situation here in Poland. I feel a kind of, uh, well, until I uh, met uh, people from Empire, uh, Extinction Rebellion here in my city, I felt kind of alone with my thinking about political or any social activity because we don't have in Poland tradition of nonviolence at all, almost at all. I stopped there. Um, it's a little bit quiet actually. I was looking for the volume. Um, but oh, I'm sorry. Um, thanks. But um, you're actually in Poland, you're based in Poland, and you're, you find that there isn't really anything about nonviolence there at all. And you really, that's really what you want to bring through XR. Well, I, I meant that uh, there is no such tradition, uh, Polish tradition of. of political or 
any other sort of fight is kind of armed, violent form of uh, achieving goals. And uh, we don't have such tradition. And the first moment when I see nonviolent action is actually Extinction Rebellion here in Poland. So I'm glad that I learned about this movement. I see, I see, yeah. So you're, oh, time. No, so no, still... you wrap yeah. up. Okay, great, yeah. So your, so your interest, you, you've discovered nonviolence through Extinction Rebellion. Is that what you're saying? Uh, no. Oh. I, I just meet people who think the same way as I think. I am interested in nonviolent action for very long, for many, many years, but I never met any other people who are involved in so deeply in nonviolent action. So, okay, I feel hurt. Thank Thanks you. Thanks for clarifying, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now it's your turn. You have my to choose somebody. My turn. Oh, um, so I guess I will choose Indra. Is that, is that right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, we've all moved around the screen on my screen. I don't know if you all That's had that. Yeah, um, <laughs> so, so, um, mm, um, some, some different ideas have come up for me since just in this circle from what I was thinking before. Um, um, just yesterday at a protest, um, I met someone who was talking about, um, who was talking about the aftermath of their arrest and being worried um, and a bit lost and confused about that. And it really occurred to me that an, just now that an online empathy circle um, would be an amazing way for people, for arrestees to be, uh, to just talk to each other and connect with each other and have, and discuss the knowledge that they have. Uh, so in a way, cause I've been, I was also thinking of it, oh, should I be reflected back now? <laughs> <laughs> it's up I'll to you back. actually. Antonio, but I'm, I'm happy to reflect back. So what I heard was that, in fact, even being part of this empathy circle is already making you think things you hadn't thought before. And that uh, just yesterday you were in a situation where you were meeting a, a, an arrestee and who was a little bit um, confused and worried. And you felt immediately that this kind of empathy circle would be very useful to him or her. Uh, to be able to, yeah, ex explore the f what he what he was it a he or she? I wasn't sure. Was f was experiencing? Yeah, that's right. Mm. Um, it was a woman, but I think it doesn't really matter. I think there's a general kind of ambiguity around what arrestees should do. Um, certainly here, anyway, in the UK, um, and. Um, I was thinking in my experience of empathy circles, it's, which are the ones I've done are quite different actually from these ones. Um, and so I was thinking of, that, that very much about them, the importance of being in person and doing them in person. But here I've already, just by doing this one here, I've already realized a value. I was trying to think of when this person was telling me about the problems that they were having. I was thinking we need an online forum. Yesterday, I was thinking we need an online forum to deal with this arrestee uh, support. And this is actually, and I was thinking of like, um, I don't know, somewhere where people write or some kind of page, but actually I think, I was, I think this, is the, this is the one. <laughs> this would be really good for that. So what I'm hearing you say is that, um until now you've uh, you felt there was some ambiguity for people who have been arrested and wasn't quite clear what they should do um perhaps with their feelings as well as practical actions and that in your experience of empathy circles in the past it wasn't uh, something that you felt in the past should have happened in person um but now you're feeling something different that 
you know, you were, you were beginning to feel that something more needed to be available, like an online forum. Uh, and you were thinking before that this might have meant a place to write things or to record feelings, but now taking part in this, you, you were thinking maybe this is the thing that you were looking for that people need in addition to the thing that they can have when they do it in, in, in person. Is that, is that a, right? Grace? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So, April, uh, are you, yeah, I'll, I'll speak to you if that's okay. Uh, yeah, time? Yes. Um, so, I'm, I'm also enjoying this experience, uh, just to hear direct, very directly from people and not being in a debate or a discussion is very refreshing, actually. And um, I'm working with the uh, the three people that you saw before, Paul and Sam, uh, building this um, future democracy hub in the UK. And um, uh, what I've been anxious like about until now is, yes, sorry. That, I'm just wondering if that's short enough to reflect there or look. I just wanted to say, you know, how that you were... It depends were, what you um, need. It depends what you need. Okay. Because I know that my memory doesn't... Yeah. I, I might forget things and maybe I'm just rushing in, but... I, uh, no, no, no. Just it's okay. reflecting that uh, you are finding it refreshing to be in a space where people can talk and it's not a debate or uh, there's actually time to bring what you need to say and to noticing people's experience of being heard and that you're currently working with two other people who are here today and looking at future democracies with XR. Thank you. So what I've been um, emphasizing more than anything I think is the need for there to be a, a wide variety of speeds of entry into Extinction Rebellion. So not that everybody should start in the same place, but that people should have a choice of entry points into Extinction Rebellion so that it could be, you know, action, it could be discussion, it could be this, you know, one-to-one -one conversations, it could be one-to-four conversations, it could be one-to-ten conversations. Is that some people are comfortable at different speeds. Is that time? Yep. <laughs> Carolina, is that to reflect? No, no, I, I, I ask for pausing for you. <laughs> ah, thank you. Um, yeah, so uh, I hear that you, uh, your experiences of XR have brought you to understand that there diff people have different um, levels of need of how they can enter uh, the, uh, I guess, you know, the discussions um, within XR and that currently there, you, you don't, maybe don't see the different levels of engagement being offered and you're seeing a way for that to happen. Yeah, so not only different levels of discussion, but actual different levels of participation. You know, so for some, it would be emphasizing discussion and others prefer to be in action. Uh, and then where we have to create enough multiple entry points so that everybody feels comfortable moving into participation. So I hear that you, um feel that there might be a way to make uh, different levels of entry into XR on many different levels um, available to people. You're seeing that there might be a way to do that to allow people to feel more comfortable in their uh, onboarding engagement with XR. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I feel heard. Thank you. Hey, oh. really your turn. 
You select April. Ah, you okay, like thank you. Mm -hmm. Oh. oh. Dear. Um, um, Tony. Uh, doesn't it? Um, she can choose that, whoever well, everybody has. Like. Everybody heard. Isn't it? Has everybody it? been listening? I haven't listened, but as a speaker, you can choose oh, who you Edward. want. Yeah, but if you like to. Oh, okay. Has everyone listened? Has I'm everyone quite listened? happy for Edwin. I just didn't. Okay. I didn't sure, I'll I'll listen then. So if I haven't listened. Hmm. Oh no, I have listened. It was it was a uh, Carrie who hasn't. Yeah, so actually, Carrie. if you wanted to make sure everyone had a turn, it would Thank be Carrie. You. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Carrie, that would be lovely. Thank you. Right then. Mm. Thank you. Um, I'm also enjoying um, a space where there is enough time to hear a whole idea from I am not rooted in MVC and experiential uh, or, or embodied experience of these things. So I'm very open to the learning of actually stepping into something and trying it out. So mm -hmm. shall I step in and reflect you back there? Thank you. Uh, I think I heard you say that you're enjoying the space to be able to hear a speaker full thought or something like that you said. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, although not rooted in nonviolent communication, you are um, enjoying um, the embodied practice of exploring this, something around embodied practice. Yeah, thank you. And I am, uh, you know, right in the depths of kind of reaching for lots of different ways, pathways almost, like Indra, but for people to engage with conflict or with whatever arises before conflict you know the discomfort um and so i am appreciating that this would definitely be a tool that could be used in lots of places but first and foremost i love that this could be passed out to local groups and i see ways to do that Yeah, so seeing ways that this could work with local groups um, and you've, you're, you're exploring different pathways of ways of responding to conflict. Sorry, it's my son swearing um, as he's playing his video game. Um, yeah, exploring pathways of way, different ways of responding to conflict, um, different tools for people. I'm just going to mute myself. Thank you. And, uh, I, so I mean immediately I can see I love the idea of arrestee support that's a great genius idea and a, another one is the we do an exploring conflict call once a week where local groups uh, come to the call and explore conflict for themselves with the three conflict presses I could see people from local groups coming to to a call like this experiencing empathy circle and perhaps the sort of facilitation training for that really giving people agency that these things do not need experts they are something that we can all learn and share with our groups and uh, that's something where that resilience building within communities is important really crucial in xr thank you yeah so that last bit was you can already see this working for RSD support um, and other um, 
and other groups to increase resilience and you really enjoy what you really enjoy about this that it doesn't require an expert that it increases resilience it increases people's own capacity to facilitate themselves mm. yes thank you okay i think that was time so carrie you're up your turn to select someone I've already spoken. We keep I going. Done, you, we? Yeah, we no. just keep it going for the time allotted. Ah. So we have another. But have you spoken, Edwin? Uh, I don't I think have. you've spoken. I did. Uh huh. Okay. You spoke oh, yeah. to, After me me. to begin with. Uh -huh. So you can select anyone. Ah, okay. Okay. I see. Right. <laughs> kind of mixing it up is good too. Yes, I'm speaking <laughs> with different people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So. Um, uh, who else is here? There's, um, Tony, can you reflect me back now? Yeah. <sighs> so yeah, I'm, I'm noticing, and in, as we as we settle into this practice, uh, an appreciation and a sense, growing sense of possibility, hearing hearing people's appreciation of the format. Uh, so you're, um, I'm hearing that you're appreciating the format and you're appreciating other people that are appreciating the format. <laughs> it's growing from the practice, it's developing. Mm. Yeah, and it, it gives me a sort of sense of possibility and of hope actually uh, by, by hearing that other people's appreciation of it. Yeah, and that gives you... Possibility, sense of possibility and hope. Each hearing each other. Yeah. Um, so I'm also enjoying the idea of, you know, specific, uh, sp specifically offering this to certain groups. Like, you know, we've talked about arrestee support. Um, uh, I can see some potential there, which I'm, I'm excited about. Uh, so you can see some potential of offering this for arrestee support. And maybe um, some other yeah, and other groups, yeah. Um, and uh, what else is there? Um, still, fight, I'm not quite sure how we can bring this into sort of national working groups as a practice. So there's there's some questions there about. Um, uh introducing this as part of the the working practice of working groups still some questions there i'm not quite sure how that works because i in a way I, I don't know enough about how working groups are currently op operating so i don't know i don't have that information basically mm. yeah so you're wondering yes. you're wondering how this can be brought into um the national uh working groups um and without knowing enough about how they work already, it's very difficult to even think about how we can help with, how we can help with that or apply it to that. Mm. And I'm I'm also um, having a, a kind of imagining of you know when the next big action is that that there are loads of little empathy circles happening all over the place, like in Parliament Square and on bridge or whatever, whatever, you know, wherever we, we end up being, but I can just imagine it. I can just imagine it happening. And I'm, I'm also remembering a little kind of empathy circle that we had, Tony, uh, which kind of helped us integrate uh, the, the momentous things that happened, particularly on, on the bridge. So I'm, I'm, I'm remembering uh, just how, how lovely it was just to kind of integrate and just kind of speak and be heard and there were four of us there that did it at, the, at that time something similar so it's a very sweet memory yeah um so you're remembering the the experience we had where we did something very similar um and how helpful that was in the middle of uh an action a big the big international rebellion and you're and because of that you're also imagining a f future actions where we could 
um, where there'd be empathy circles happening all around and it would be just part of the part of rebellion, part of the rebellion. Yeah, yeah, and I have a sense of how uh, crucial for kind of well-being it can be that, you know, I have that as part of my practice, so I was doing that all the way through the rebellion, but not everyone is, so I thank you, Carolina. I imagine it could be hugely helpful to embed this as part of, um, you know, future rebellions. Thank you. Should I, do I reflect back now yeah. or not? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, really just what I'm hearing is just really how this practice of yours, um, you're really hoping and imagining that it could become part of all, all of our practice um, and it could be a useful way for everyone to regenerate and um, help themselves and each other in the way that we, we did it in the past. Thank you. Oh, so now I'm <laughs> so now I'm um, selecting um, April. Would you like to reflect more? Thank you. Uh, oh, thank you, uh, Kerry, for reminding me of that. That was that was really helpful. Um, What am I thinking? Lots of thought. Recently, I was doing, I was at a, um, a meeting where we, I've done a few things related to empathy, so similar things at Extinction Rebellion. Um, usually it's twos or threes, and um, there hasn't been the reflecting back. There's been the listening, there's been the speaker and the listener, but not the reflect back and sometimes there's an observer um, and um, I'm kind of notice I'm noticing how I'm noticing the advantages and disadvantages of the reflecting um, I really like how the reflecting um, is teaches listening um, it's a kind of um, an oral modeling and practice of listening and it and by doing by showing how I'm doing it we're showing we're showing each other how to listen um, and that's really really valuable <laughs> mm. thank you and uh, yes so I really hear that you've had some uh, experiences at Extinction Rebellion meetings with similar types of process where people have split into twos or threes and had listening exercises. However, they haven't utilized the extra aspect of reflecting back. Uh, and that has uh, shown you both advantages and disadvantages to it. However, it's something you're really appreciating because of the uh, modeling of the practice of good listening uh, and uh, yeah I'm mm. and that that you uh, and not good but of course just the practice of listening gets stronger ear muscles yeah it's practicing it and it's modeling it it's practicing it and mm. it's teaching it at the same time uh, mm. you can say you can reflect <laughs> practicing and listening at the same time is uh, important um practicing and modeling sorry mm. or pr yeah practicing and teaching or uh, learning um so um on the other hand what i what i'm finding a little bit here is by slowing it down there's a bit less flow and I've had three minutes to talk in other in other listening practices um, like this, but without when there's no reflection, um, I can get into my flow quite a bit in three minutes and speak quite freely. <laughs> I'm recognizing that it uh, that you have 
that you find slowing it down into smaller chunks breaks out up your flow and that three minutes is actually uh, quite a short time when you're really engaged in your flow. Uh, do you feel hurt, Tony? Yes, I do. Thank you very much, April. April. Uh, Edwin, are you there? Because I'm you here. are full. I'm here. We have time, I think, for one more, uh, another three minutes. April, if you want to speak, okay. then we'll join the larger group. Okay. Uh, I would ask um, Carolina to reflect. Okay, I will try. Thank you. Um, I'm, I've, I also understand about the three minutes and flow, and I'm probably, um, I'm recognizing that it's my own anxiety that I might forget something and I'm not. And this is probably the sort of anxiety that rises in people that they've got to somehow reflect back right so this is something that might come up for people is is are they doing it right in reflecting you know and it's only the practice and experience that allows that thank you would you pause would you pause okay uh so what i'm hearing you as well uh, uh, you also like uh tony uh, feel kind of time pressure during this empathy dialogue you think that uh, if the time allotted for exchange is too short it's kind of pressing people and it might be difficult remembering everything what you want to say and reflect so it's kind of time pressure you experience is it correct Hmm. I suppose that I was remem I was noticing that I wanted to break into Tony's uh, com um, flow because of my own ex anxiety that I wasn't going to reflect her right, and that I'm simply noting that other people might feel that way. Um, if they're new to this practice, that might be. So that's, I love the idea of having a whole three minutes to reflect and really three minutes isn't very long. And yet this is the sort of, I'm recognizing this might be the sort of anxiety in, in people new to this. Is, oh, am I doing it right? Oh, so. <laughs> okay. Uh, so what I'm hearing you saying that when Tony was speaking, and you want to kind of interrupt in the flow of her speech to, because you're afraid that you might have problem with uh, reflecting what she was saying uh, in the right way and you felt kind of excitement and uh, well sort of you know stress that you might not remember exactly what she was saying or forgot some details and the, your reflecting will be not, as you think, good enough. Uh. Yeah, thank you. So, uh, I also saw you were talking about when a team, so I, I, where I see a use for it is being when a team has been impacted, thank you, has been impacted, or a project team have been impacted by systemic behaviors and the team itself needs some time to really listen to each other to uh, and i don't think we have much space for that at the moment well Loudest i'm not sure so I'm, yeah can you both i'm not sure what you're saying right now but it seems to me that you're talking about kind of uh work that every team has to do inside uh, the group uh, uh, with communication inside the group that's what you mean 
I suppose I was picking up on Kerry's point about how could this be used in national working groups and I didn't make that clear and okay. I am I've seen sort of three or four areas where this could immediately be useful in those groups and that's one of them is having the lost voices heard because the the loud voices are usually the ones that are heard first and this gives the lost voices a mm. chance to speak up so you, we have to wrap up, but uh, I want to reflect that well. So you, uh, you, you see the, this empathy dialogue as a kind of method to also uh, achieving some goals inside the groups that yeah. working on some tasks. Yeah, that's to it. To hear Thank people you. who are not, uh, yes, whose voices might disappear from, you know, yeah. Okay, uh, great. Well, let's, we can move back into uh, the larger group. I'm going to close all the rooms and we'll... I'm going to, I'm going to go now. Oh, okay. Thank you. Leave the room. Thank you. And I'm just Thank asking you, Carrie. Great to see you. We'll connect again later. Yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear, hear what I miss. So. Okay, it'll be recorded too. Right. Okay, did I close all the rooms? Breakout rooms? Okay. Oh, the others are probably in the middle of a discussion still. They'll yeah. They have 40 seconds and then they'll be automatically brought into this room. So you violently interrupt in their talk. Yeah, they have 20 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that. Oh, they end up. Okay, yep, I think we're all back. So, um, Gary uh, had to go, and uh, yeah, welcome back, everyone. I apologize for the the way I divide the room. I just went and clicked down the list, and I didn't really, you know, carefully select who is in what room, so it was kind of not exactly gender balanced. So, <laughs> yeah, right. I apologize for that. Yeah. And That's I was trying. To and I should have had the different groups. We have three groups. I should have had some representative from each group in that. So I really messed up. <laughs> you just wanted um, all the women to yourself. I know. Yeah. <laughs> you, you know you yeah. <laughs> um, So, and the other thing is, is usually when we do these empathy circles, we go for two hours. So this was just a little bit of a taste. Like it's usually the first hour. There's a, it was mentioned, you get to have a bit of anxiety about the practice. Am I doing it right? And that sort of kind of gets, you know, settled in the first hour. And then uh, the second hour starts going deeper and gets uh, more familiar with the process. So uh, before we go and in. We usually do that. And we usually do that for five or even six, seven minutes. Yeah. And not the times is more. It's not three minutes. We did three minutes because we were kind of a larger group. We usually go five minutes at least uh, mm -hmm. in general. So you can have different times, three minutes, five minutes, 10 minutes, or, or no limits in terms of the time, depending on, on the situation. Perhaps if it's a very conflict oriented, you know, there's a lot of conflict, you do like less time so that everyone, because everybody's just like chomping, you know, really chomping at the bits uh, to be, be heard. So smaller times are good. So let me just go over the, the uh, before we go into hearing what your feedback is on the practice, uh, having taken part in it. So the part of this was to uh, build a, a project uh, team, you know, to bring empathy circles into uh, XR. Uh, we, uh, as uh, you mentioned, you know, for bringing the practice into the democracy, future democracy hub, you know, you wanted a document, which we've done. I'm working on a video right now, so we'll be able to add that. Uh, we have an eight-hour uh, facilitation training, which is already online, and there's videos of it. Uh, so anyone can watch it, as well as we can, we can hold those uh, trainings. And uh, this was our first, you know, sort of 
working group, uh, empathy circle. Our empathy team, we have a bridging political divides group. We've been meeting every Wednesday to bring the political left and right together. So we have topics like uh, pro-life, pro-choice, we have people who are conservative as well as you know liberal or progressive. We bring them together using empathy circles to discuss this. And so we've set the next four Saturday meetings to be on, the, on this topic of how do we address uh, global warming. And so we're, we're already you know, kind of setting up, uh, you know, focusing on, on the climate change topic for the next week. Uh, we can also set up some other online trainings you know, for XR. And so we can talk about about those that are specific. And you know, I think Sam, you had mentioned um, that you're going to be doing trainings with the Future Democracy Hub. So we can you know talk about that. And uh, so that's that's just the, the start. So maybe we could just go around. If everybody wants to jump in, just how how was that as an ex an initial experience? And just share any comments without reflection. You don't have to re reflect. Yeah, I can share. Yeah, um, I've, I've been spending an awful long time in meetings recently and some of them quite big. And I don't know if it's, you know, my, what I've been educated into is I find it really difficult to break into uh, highly energetic spaces where people are, you know, rushing in and talking. Uh, um, Yeah. energy to say and so I, I really appreciate that this gives me a space to have my say uh, mm -hmm. without feeling I'm taking up everybody else's space without you know it's it's clear it's held uh, I can see lots of ways this could be used and this is one of the principles of Extinction Rebellion uh, we um, we commit to learning and reflection what is this but learning and reflecting this is uh, so i i see a, a lots of places this could be uh, utilized within extinction rebellion so thank you i uh, just to respond to that the the uh, sort of this kind of practice grew out of my experience at uh, occupy wall street in berkeley and it was what you were talking about is even the in the meetings it was you know the, the the quieter voices wouldn't get heard so it was like oh if we have instead of all these large meetings we start off with small meetings of four people so everyone has a chance to be heard and then and and then those different feelings get sort of transferred through small groups uh so that was so that's just sort of a bit of the history yeah that's it's great to know the origins thank you so that's really interesting oh hi that's really interesting yeah. that what sounds like um a lot like the citizens assemblies um when we did a citizen we did lots of citizen uh, not citizen like uh people's assemblies um at the rebellion and um and then someone a representative from each one went to and spoke and um supposedly represented what the group had said um <laughs> but um yeah i thought it broke down a bit actually at that point but um <laughs> but yeah it's kind of interesting i hadn't really thought of it as connected but with, with citizens assemblies and people it, it's actually quite similar to a people's assembly mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. small groups discussing and then it kind of the they take that information to the to the larger group. Hmm. Yeah. Go, go ahead. Indra, you I think Paul's before me. Oh. Uh, do we have like a hand raising system here? <laughs> yeah, we could, maybe yeah. we'll have a you, you can yeah how you how do you do it with your XR you have the one finger for sorry get a stack going. Yeah. No I was I didn't have my finger up so okay. Okay. I'm go for it. Okay. Yeah, I am. I'm, I enjoyed the experience. I, I, if you don't mind me reflecting back some of what you said 
Antonio, because I experienced the same, which is, um, it felt to me a little bit like, I remember when I was once in Japan and I had an interpreter and every three, mm. every 30 seconds or so, she wanted to interpret for me. So I never quite got into the flow of what I really wanted to say. And there's definitely a little bit of that for me. And, but I also see the necessity of it because it's a, it's a mutual thing, isn't it? The listening and the, and the, res, um, you know, reflecting back is two people having an experience actually, not one. Um, and it's for both of them actually. So I kind of accept that, but it is a little bit, it's also quite difficult, I think, to get into the flow of what you wanted to express if you stop every 30 seconds or 40 seconds or whatever it's necessary. So that's just one thing. And then my question to the group is, if people are expressing, but there's no discussion, where does it go after that? Because in a, in a, in a people's assembly, as Tony says, there's supposed to be a report back of the discussion which is not the same as this, it seems. This, is some, this seems to be a standalone experience. Is that, is that right? It doesn't go anywhere. It's, just, it's an experience. It's a standalone experience of being heard. Is that correct? If I may, if oh, I may. Yeah. Carolina, do you want to answer that? Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, actually, I experience, uh, when I practice empathy dialogue, it become more easier with time you practicing, kind of pause, giving a chance to your reflector to say what you, you just said, and it become more and more fluent uh, when you're practicing that. That's first thing. Another thing is I participate in a lot of political discussion all the time, and actually empathy dialogue gives the chance when it's your turn, you express yourself. And when there is many turns, your opponents can reflect, can uh, uh, answer to your argument with their argument in, when there is their turn. So everybody has chance to say their point, of, to show their point of view. Uh, so, uh, if you watch our uh, um, um, our recordings, you will see sometimes the the whole thread of topic uh, kind of uh, uh, drive by us to different direction. We change our minds. You know, it's very interesting what's happening during the the empathy circle sometimes. You know, and it's about one particular topic. Uh, Bill, oh, Lou, would you be willing to take the stack? I wanted to take notes. Would you? Sure. Uh, and Bill was up. Sure. So. I, I just want to res respond to Indra oh. that uh, you can make a report. Uh, the, there is no, one of the great things about the practice is that it's about creating kind of consensus and emotional connection. So, in, so you can have a report. You're not breaking any rule. Um, and then uh, number two, the other thing that goes on, I think, and that we experienced, certainly I did, is that there's an emotional, deepening emotional connection. And what was talked about in our um, group is warmth. And so that sort of emotional support then, I think, is very valuable in creating consensus and community, and then you know, making a decision about something. So it can be used for that. That in that sense too. Paul, and then I'm gonna. I want to say something after Paul. Yeah, I, I was just um, so thinking the same thing when you were talking, Indra. I I remembered being inter and in interpreted as an mm. as a foreign language, and actually I found that really over time gave me the time to really think about what I was saying, and I got into a real rhythm with it. But it did, it did take a while. And um, just in answer to your original question, Edwin, I, I'm really excited about the potential for this in, in XR and just life generally. Um, we, we talked extensively in our group about all the qualities of this and the, the listening quality. Um, it's a fundamental. And the way we were envisaging this going in terms of the future democracy hub as being very much a foundation practice 
which will give the you know the foundational of active listening throughout anything else that we're also doing so very excited that it's it's doing exactly that so the couple of things i wanted to say was um so the the aspect of having to pause every 30 seconds so i th so i think it's more having to pause after one or two ideas so sometimes uh some people take longer to get their ideas out than other people and uh and what I notice doing this a long time is what you really need to do is pause probably after two ideas because if they're big ideas, people have trouble holding three three for the reflection. Mm -hmm. But so it isn't so much length of time as it is a, a, a number, number of ideas that have been expressed. Um, the second thing is, so I do think that this process of time turn taking, mutual listening, all that, really is about, I mean, I, I say this in all the circles that I do, is that the, it's not about, the circle is about creating mutual understanding for us to understand each other. We're not trying to argue with each other or convince each other or win an argument. We're trying to express ourselves for the purpose of being understood and, and to understand one another. And I do think from my experience with conflict resolution and communication, that when there's space in the expression of ideas, people then are free to more kind of adopt, decide what they agree and disagree with and maybe adopt a, another way of thinking without being forced to admit that they're wrong or that they're beaten in the argument or something like that. So this, while, while it isn't an explicit part of the process to try to create consensus or make a decision. Um, p ideas do get expressed and people have the freedom to kind of say, oh, well, you know, I kind of agree with that. And, and the structure of the process um, helps reduce the emotional charge around doing that. Because a lot of times the reason conflicts continue is because, you know, people are trying to convince each other and they're trying to win an argument. And there's, there's a personal dynamic there um, that gets in the way of actually hearing the other person's point of view and being willing to say, well, you know, I agree with that, or yeah, I see your point now. And so I'm going to change where I change my point of view. Antonia. Um, yeah. Thank you, Lou, for saying that. Um, I've definitely learned a lot from similar sorts of circles. Um, and um, so what I'm, my, I, it, it raises a question for me, which is, um, are there any kind of guidelines about how to speak or what to, this kind of things you can and can't can't say in an empathy circle? Because the ones I've done, there's there have been, and so I'm cu I'm curious to hear. Edwin, and then I'll have something to say to you. Go ahead, Edwin. Okay. In terms of uh, guidelines, you know, a lot of times you hear, well, you know, speak from the heart, do this, do that. In the empathy circle, we say, just say whatever you want. You know, it's like, it, you're totally free to say, uh, you know, speak how you want. You know, you don't have to use I statements. You don't have, it, it's like, just say what you want and the person reflects it. And it's the reflection that sort of transforms it and sort of creates more ease for people. And, and maybe somebody say, you're an idiot, you're a total jerk. Well, I hear you say, I'm an idiot, I'm a jerk, you know? Then, and just that listening itself, kind of the empathy towards, you know, maybe their judgments or anger kind of starts transforming it. So there is, if, if you're meaning, you know, are we, are we setting it up? You have to speak a certain way. You, you don't. And the thing I'll add to that is what I, having taught conflict resolution and communication skills a lot, one of the things I love about this process is how little control you try to exert over people in the circle. So as Edwin says, you could say whatever you want. And the other thing we don't do is try to give a lot of people a lot of training in reflection. Like, how do you reflect? Like, why are you reflecting this part or this part? People reflect at whatever, whatever level they are. So some people just reflect back the facts, you know, that's where they are that to begin with. You know, I've been in circles where it's a charged topic and the person who's a reflector can't reflect it back, you know, and they will say, I can't, I can't, 
I don't know what the person said, or I'm so upset right now, I can't reflect it back at all. In which case I, I will do the reflection and then ask them is that, but so it does help to have a skilled facilitator who has good reflecting skills because just having at least one person in the circle that does that, other people get, begin to pick up what it means to do reflection by that person's example. And that's also why we start the circle with the facilitator being the first listener because it provides some, some example of um, that reflecting is not judging, it's not adding information, it's not giving advice, it's not any of the things that we do that, aren't, that isn't really reflecting. Uh, Sam. Uh, you're muted, Sam. Yeah, I just wanted to um, say my experience. Yeah, it was quite a deep experience. I've had both times now I've done empathy circles. And one of the things that came out of it this time for me was um, just how much better I, my, my words sounded coming from someone else in a way. And it, and it was just the feeling that what I had just said had made sense to someone. And that gave me a simultaneous feeling of, of, of um, being heard, but also of, of it, it swelled my confidence. And I, I really like that, the, the feeling that this could give tremendous confidence to people who need to talk, who need to be heard and to have a voice in a, in a difficult, maybe in a very difficult environment. Uh, Paul? And then yeah. Selena. A question really about the people who've done it um, a lot. Um, I really recognize Bill and Lou in our group, you know, really felt like you've done it a bit and I felt like I could tell you know that you'd got a bit of experience and presumably you get better at this you feel like you're growing as you're doing more of those things I guess the question is there anything that you think would help if you're just starting out if there was any kind of tips I imagine they're probably on the site that you've got that we could pick up with and integrate to help it flow a little bit Caroline, do you want to say something like that or about that, or I can respond? No, first respond to, to the question. Um, when I started doing the work here in Petaluma, uh, doing listening cafes, and I recruited people to be uh, facilitators for the circles, and I started to do this process with them and then try to explain a little bit about what I do as a facilitator, I realized that I do a lot that I wasn't kind of aware of, and I wound up writing up a sheet uh, of tips for facilitators. And doing that, I realized there's like a whole nother sheet I, I could um, put together. So there, so there, is, there is a lot of subtlety uh, and things to attend to uh, as a facilitator. Um, and so I think it is good to have some training. But it's also, I see that the people that come back in the conversations, the local conversations we have here, the people that come two, three, four times, you know, they start to learn the process by osmosis and they participate in it. It does grow. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Carolina, do you want to say something? Uh, okay, uh, well, as, um, well, I'm more political activist than uh, any of the Edwin team, so to speak. And I know that there is this struggle between what I mean and what I think is right and between this attitude of listen to the other person. I'm struggling with it all the time because I know what is right. And I have always problem this, okay, I have to try to hear the other person. And for me, the, the, the way to find it is... Um, kind of believing in goodwill of the other, of my opponent, kind of. I believe in it, that this person want, want, uh, wants good, something good. I believe in her or his goodwill. That's, that's the, 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 the condition to good empathy dialogue. That's what I believe. But actually, I would like to ask you, if you see any use of this uh, 
structure a dialogue during the street action, for example, sitting uh, or something like that, especially when there is any kind of uh, clash with bystanders or other people who are dis uh, disturbed by you, by your action. Do you see any possibility, opportunity to, to talk to them in this structural dialogue? How do you see that? Edwin? Yeah, I have, was uh, just uh, doing some brainstorming about how it could be used in, in the group, uh, I mean, XR, since, you know, we've done the empathy tent, we've set up the empathy tent over, you know, over the years ever since, you know, Occupy Wall Street. So been out there listening to people. So some of the things I, I was thinking was, uh, you know, that activists are practicing empathy, the using the empathy circle as a practice beforehand, like we're doing here. We're just getting familiar with it, you know, in a non-confrontational environment. Uh, so you get, uh, when we set up the empathy tent, when we first, you know, when we set it out in public, especially if we, we go to these left-right political uh, rallies where there, I mean, there's knockdown, drag out street fights, and I mean, there's like blood flowing literally in the streets. And we set up the empathy tent and it's very nerve wracking. So we, we set up and we start with an empathy circle, you know, before, like, how are you feeling now? Like, hey, I'm like totally scared shitless, I feel totally tense, you know, about what's about to happen here. You know, take some, take some deep breath. So we kind of get heard. And then uh, during the event, I've, I've done sort of mediation, you know, like between the left and the right. And it's like, it gets really tense. And it's like, there's somebody there that can just listen. It's like, oh, I got to get, just be heard. You know, I'm just feeling these people are really on my case. And I'm just, you know, feeling really stressed. So just to have somebody being heard, so having listeners, you know, in the events. Um, and also to use the empathy circle to an, as an agreement that if we have a conflict, that we agree that we'll take it into the empathy circle. So having it as a agreement, you know, beforehand. So, hey, we have a conflict, what do we do? Oh, we have an empathy circle. Um, and then also we offer listening to the public. So if you're at an event, you know, you can set up chairs where the public comes and, and says, oh, come, we're here to listen. We're offering listening to you. And then that's sort of a gateway. And then we say, oh, you can also do empathy circles. And we sort of teach the public who are coming by. Uh, we offer the free listening as well as engage them in empathy circles. And so you're kind of talking to passer buyers, you know, who are, who are there. And it can also be uh, a, 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 a demand because we're, we're talk, I've been talking to our governor of the state here. I keep running into him about doing an empathy circle with the opposition. So it can be one of the demands is, hey, we want an empathy circle with you uh, to talk about climate, uh, you know, climate change. So it can be sort of one of the practices that is the demand with people in power. So those were just some sort of brainstorms uh, that, that I had, so. Indra? Uh, no, I just wanted to say thank you for that, Edwin, because that was l loads of um, responses. So I had a similar question to Carolina. Um, I still am not clear about. Um, I can see it. I can see it working very well. In conflict, internal conflicts. Um, how you move it into the external conflicts? You described a couple of times that you got left and right into the same space, but I. I, I, I can't imagine how easy it is to do that unless, I mean, even the invitation seems quite confrontational as an invitation to me. Um, but I was thinking more from, from, from where we're working uh, in the UK that the, uh, at a community level, it would work well to have something that's more permanent. You know, so to have, I like the cafe idea that there should be empathy cafes where you can always go. Uh, at any time during the week to have bigger or smaller conversations because in a way that's where the environmental uh, crisis can meet the democracy crisis. So, uh, you know, for us there's Brexit and there's, you know, climate going on at the same time, but uh, an empathy cafe could really absorb any 
any kind of need to talk really and then those things will fall into those spaces rather than set up two polar, polarized ca camps I, I i still can't really see how you'd get at the polarized conversation in a natural way uh, other other than that being a sort of permanent fixture in a community um yeah uh, Bill, do you want us to go? Bill? Oh, sure. Uh, well, just uh, one idea. This is a brainstorm that I have that I actually acted on. But uh, one of the ideas that I have is just having a shirt like that saying designated listener. And then just a person would come out and then you would basically just listen to people. And within the group, in a demonstration, uh, if you had trained facilitators who were willing to do that, it's not exactly the empathy circle. But you could, it would serve several purposes. It would tend to, uh, for people who are feeling out, um, tend to have someone to listen to them, and calm them down, and, like make them feel more confident and things like that. Um, so that's just an idea that I, I, I kind of threw out. The other tip is that sometimes when people talk about, well, we're having a conversation about empathy, it's really about listening. So in promoting of these things, you know, you're not there simply just to talk. It's about, uh, I guess, uh, elevating the skill of listening. You're here to learn a lesson and stuff like that. And, um, and the other thing really quickly, uh, I just want to say is that I heard you talk about uh, de-escalation techniques and things in the heat of the moment. Um, in my work, I was, uh, since 1994, I've been a trainer in that regard, in de-escalation techniques, uh, establishing whether someone is about to go off and things like that and proactively doing escalate. So I just want to offer myself, sounds like you have a lot going there, uh, but as a reference, if you, if somebody used me as that. Thank you. Antonia, did you want to say something? Oh, it's just, uh, that's my way of uh, strongly agreeing. <laughs> oh. um, mm. But um, yeah, thank you for um, rec uh, your, about train um, saying that you help with training and de-escalation. Kerry and I were both in the de-escalation team at the Rebellion, so um, yeah, it's very helpful to know that there are other that there are people skilled who we could turn to for advice. Um, and what was it you were just saying before? Because that was what I was thinking about. Uh, about the individual listeners, oh, listener. Yeah. So actually, there's been something um, that's been going on ever since this idea was proposed, um, Edwin, ever since you proposed it. Um, I've been kind of thinking about it. And because my experience of empathy circles, which is a bit, which is a little bit different, they're called listening circles. And it's suddenly kind of come home and there's been something kind of slightly um concerning me but i wasn't really sure what and i think what i'm hearing what i'm realizing now is that in this context in the uk i think list calling them listening circles would be there'd be a lot more uh openness um and everybody's really willing to do listening <laughs> but i think there'd be quite a lot of resistance to the word empathy <laughs> <laughs> So thinking of it as a listening practice, I think what translates better in the UK. <laughs> so I wanted to make a comment about two things. So one was about inviting the opposition or how, how do you get uh, people that you disagree with? If, if that's your goal, one of your goals is to connect across those differences. So one is, um, and this, this has happened here in Petaluma with the conversations that I'm having. So we, in, in, despite the fact that we've been inviting, you know, in all our invitations, we say we want people with different points of view. You know, we're re really not getting people from the, uh, the other side. And so I've been brainstorming a little bit, well, how do we do that? And what seems lo you know, completely logical to me is that rather than making a broad invitation, we go and make specific invitations. So like reaching, me reaching out to someone in a conservative organization and saying, can I have a conversation with you? And getting to them and talking to them about bridging political divides and then doing listening practice with them. So I've created a relationship there. And then maybe going into their organization and doing an empathy circle 
with them on whatever they want to talk about and then say, then because you've got a connection saying, would you be willing to come and participate with people in our organization? So there'd be enough trust there built that they might be willing to come. I think that's the way to do it. That's just a brainstorm. I haven't done it yet, but my instincts are, you know, that that's the way to go about it. And Indra, what does that symbol mean? Oh, that means I, I just want to specifically respond to what you specifically said. And oh, okay. it's a way of uh, getting uh, up to the top of the stack. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go ahead. But it would be brief, just to be in a very brief response to what you said. Go ahead. That it's almost the opposite in my experience that okay. if you invite people on the basis of the idea that there is an opposition, is a way of buying into the thing that divided you. Whereas when you're in a community together, you start a new conversation about the community or about the future of the community. And then you might find that there are different ways of being in that space, which can be heard. But if you go into it as if you're, as if in a way you're prolonging the present by, by buying into this divide that has been created by some something else in a way brexit is a very good example of that because it's a kind of a fake divide that's been created by our political system and if you buy into it then people find they have to defend their they have to defend their space whereas if we're just citizens together trying to live more happily in a community together then we can talk about something different and find our commonalities faster that's just a, a response directly to what you're saying which is why i think it's hard to bring polarities together without without possibly deepening them as yeah. well even though there's also the possibility that you'll overcome them you could go both ways in that yeah so i really appreciate you saying that and to the degree that it points out an unconscious bias of mine that i'm seeing the other as the other or an opposition yeah. i'm grateful for that uh but i what i actually what i am saying is that I recognize that there are people that I would like to be part of the conversation who are not, and I'm not in regular contact with them. So how do I encourage them to participate? It's not so much actually that I'm holding them as the other because I, my nonviolence training teaches me not to view them that way. And so I would not be approaching them as the other, but I do recognize there, there are people that I don't have contact with. So how do I, um, reach out to them how do i find them Obviously. communicate with them invite them and if they and if i invite them and they don't participate how do i how do i respond to that you know how how do i help make a connection with them so yeah okay it's, it's very interesting what uh, indra said because he kind of shift our focus from dualism of relation to kind of diversity in unity it's interesting mm -hmm. if i understand you correctly that's very interesting i like it edwin uh, uh one thing that we have done is actually reach out to the different sides so we've held some empathy circles with the pro-life pro-choice side and actually went to some pro-life uh events and then you know developed connections and invited uh, some organizers to these empathy circles. We also went to the Republican uh, convention here, as well as the Democratic convention, so have uh, sort of been reaching out. Um, but for the last 20 minutes, maybe we could talk about what are some, maybe some next steps uh, to do. We, we, we now have uh, every sat for the next four Saturdays, we'll have an empathy cafe that we're trying to get the word out, which will be just, uh, you know, for, uh, use, uh, for it'll be two-hour practice of, of the uh, empathy circle practice, uh, which is just sort of a public event. And just wondering if there is uh, one thing is like topics, like how to frame topics that uh, you know would engage people. And two, is there some specific? I know Sam, you had mentioned maybe doing some trainings or something through the Democracy Hub, or is there some? empathy circles that would be specifically helpful to what you're doing that we could have, you know, besides the Saturday ones and we could schedule and facilitate those. So, yeah. Uh, Paul, you're muted, Paul. <laughs> Thank you. Um, 
just before I answer that, I um, just wanted to recognise that question that you raised, Lou, I think is one of the key questions of our time. How do we reach out to the seldom heard and the other, you know, the other side, as it were, you know, and that's an ongoing inquiry for all of us. And it's exciting that we, we can share and learn from our experiences on that. Um, in terms of um, rolling this out, there is, yeah, obviously the trainings that we've got planned for the future democracy hub once it gets launched um are exactly what we're doing here basically we like to give people an experience of of those things so it's an obvious thing that we just present this as a as an offering and you guys come along and, and facilitate or we can have a go ourselves i just think that would be just an obvious thing to do and then the the thing on the questions with these kind of conversations where you're bringing lots of people together the question is really valuable if you get a really good question good topic it can make a, a big difference and one of the things that we've been exploring with um, is what's most relevant and interesting to people in the movement at the moment because they're the first early adopters they're going to be they'll be the people coming along first people who are already involved with xr and we've had some thoughts about what what might be for example what are typical questions and challenges you get asked as a member of XR and how do you answer them? Those kind of things. Uh, April? Hi. Yeah, this has been uh, rich and fascinating and given me lots to think about. One area, like, uh, you know, one of the roles that I have in Extinction Rebellion is I'm a guardian. I'm on the guardianship circle. And um, that is a small group of people who um, are kind of holders of the origins of Extinction Rebellion. We were all part of Rising Up before it began. And we are just trying to keep hold of documents and systems and the way the organism is evolving trying to make sure that things stay within the values and principles that we first that rising up came up with and i tell you it was a tortuous process uh, that i wasn't involved in but other people in the guardianship team were involved in, in writing these values and principles However, my experience with them is that actually some of them particularly are really very woolly. And I am now engaging in a project with the guardianship team for us to uh, really invest some time and energy in diving deep into the values and principles. And I believe that one of our values and principles would... Uh, have great treasure in using em empathy circle and I have to say Tony I also agree that were we to use the term listening circle we would come up against a little less kind of the pre-wave of prejudice that people have against anything that they think is too new age spiritual hippie which is empathy or that is nvc recognizable language also gets some bad press in some ways in some areas so i'm I, while i am a person i've spent time with robert gonzalez i think that i actually you know have a, an intuitive delight when i discovered the unrolling of what empathy was actually actually was all about uh I love the word and I think it has a wave of prejudice about it in um, England. So listening circles, I think this could really unroll in that principle that we're looking at of um, reflecting and learning and really engaging people in learning to expand those listening muscles and the reflection process. So. I can see lots of areas that were spoken about certainly in our uh, circle earlier where it, 
they would have practical immediate use and also something that and a way that could really unroll them within the organization is to focus that principle on listening circles and how do we and how we uh, use use that to embed and enrich our experience of the principle of reflecting and learning from each other. Hmm, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Paul? Uh, uh, second proposal uh, in, on, in that vein, is that in any way realistic? Um, I'm looking at Edwin now to call it M to listening circles rather than empathy circles. I imagine that would be a bit of a challenge considering your website has got empathy written all over it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, some uh, like Lou is actually calling it conversation cafes. So there's a bit of, you know, flexibility there. Uh, there is a, a larger empathy uh, movement. So there's really, I mean, those are, there's a huge amount of books, you know, coming out uh, about empathy. So in one sense, it's about even though the culture is maybe not quite there yet with, you know, recognizing the term, it is good to, it, it's having the experience. Like in my family, I tried to have like, you know, talk about empathy with them. They couldn't understand. Then I mediated a conflict and it ended with hugs all around. And I said, oh, this is empathy. And they said, oh, this is great. You know, and ever since then, you know, they've been calling it empathy circles and they're on the conservative side, you know, Trump supporters, et cetera but they're very supportive of something that works. So uh, part of it is maybe an education, but you know, sliding it in with listening to begin with and you know, kind of being overlap with empathy you know, later. I think there's something about the, the term empathy that's kind of the most uh, accurate of what we're trying to do, but you know, kind of making it accessible is being empathic too, right? So. Yeah, and I, when here in Petaluma, uh, when I was introducing the idea of doing, uh, it's called Petaluma Conversations, and I didn't say we were going to be doing empathy circles. I said we were going to be doing, a, we were going to use a structured listening process, and I described it, and then we did it, and it was probably more like the second or third session that I used the term empathy circle. You know, I said this is an empathy circle process that was developed by the Center for Building a Culture. And by then, people had experienced it, and so they, they didn't really care what it was called. <laughs> uh, oh, sorry. No, you, Tony, you first. Uh, I wanted to um, raise another point, um, but I'll just say, adding on to that, that, um, um, I, yeah, I think, I, I think we can call it different things, and in in the in the time in the moment i think there's also a real value of emphasizing the t the term listening in itself i think that's also a really really helpful word um because we talk a lot about free speech and 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 talking but we don't talk that much about listening <laughs> and i also hear like women in particular all the time saying you know he doesn't listen and uh i think it's kind of like what is listening and you know what how, you know what people have different ideas about what listening is in itself so just practicing listening as in that way is uh, um, an interesting exercise um, but what I wanted to um, ask about what I wanted to talk about was uh, I'm um, I'm still kind of slightly struggling to figure out how I can apply how I can um, put, use empathy circles in the spaces that I'm in, in XR. I'm trying to imagine like, like an, an, an empathy cafe. If I wanted to just sort of set one up in any of the spaces that I'm in, I, can't, I still can't really picture how I might do that. Um, so that's- Can I say something? So I actually wanted to say this earlier when, when people were talking about, you know, what about, so it's one thing to have to hear everyone, but what about if the group wants to make a decision or something like that? And I think, I think you can do that by 
having an empathy circle and then you could do a round so you could do a round on the questions or rounds on what people are thinking but then you could also do rounds on what are people's ideas for what to do about this and then you could collect those so you can change the question that's in the circle to have different phases of the circle uh and so i that that i think is would work I think Indra has had something too. <laughs> I, I can see we've only got five minutes left and basically what's been set off is a huge discussion about the possibilities and I mean, you know, I'm sure we could talk for another half an hour. Um, and just to respond to the last two things that Tony and Lou said, I'm, what's coming to my mind is that um, maybe we could develop a, a process within which it starts at a set in a certain way which is to simply have entry points and listening and could possibly move into a more dialog dialogic um, purpose which is to hear what the person might what I understood as being dialogue is that you hear what the person says you reflect back to them what they've said and then and then you respond having done that so that you're always moving upwards so to speak you never there's something about holding your ground which to me doesn't necessarily lend itself to conflict transformation or even resolution can we you know can we design something around using this as a tool but then moving into uh, you know stages of discussion which would, might end up with uh, some form of transformation of that space um that's just a question i'm putting I'm just putting in there maybe, maybe that's something you've already done i think <coughs> bill had something that no uh, no you're muted bill <coughs> Uh, I just want to let you know that I put my email uh, in the chat in case you want to use me for a resource so you can contact me. And the only other point is that I think the core practice is really flexible. And it's almost not, the main point is not the issue, but the feeling. And there are many ways to get to that feeling of community and support. And if, if you're doing that and you come out of it feeling that way, I think you're doing it right. Okay, so uh, I think that the uh, the part I want to add, uh, Indra, was that the empathy circle uh, practice is sort of a gateway practice. It's an easy, you know, easily reproduced, easy to start with practice. But you just keep adding. It's sort of like a foundational container. You can add mediation skills. You can add nonviolent skills. You can. It can be a gateway to. Uh, to uh, citizens' assemblies or people's assemblies. There's facilitation skills that are based on this. Uh, processes like dynamic facilitation. Uh, just there's a, a, a nonviolent communication. This is kind of like the beginning step for going in a lot of different directions. But we're trying to just focus on this one little first step and sort of mass produce it as widely as possible because it's easy and good place to just kind of get the ball rolling and then anybody can kind of do it. Anybody can take it home, you know. So that's kind of the kind of the part. That, and so taking it into action, there's a lot of tools for you know creating yeah. actions and steps and schedules. And it's actually a gateway to the whole human-centered design practice. If you're familiar with, uh, I mean, I see XR has a great, a large part of design in it. You know, from the design community. So if you're familiar with human-centered design, empathic design, design thinking, that this is like, again, a, a first step for the whole design thinking process, which is immensely powerful and, you know, for problem and innovation. So... Um, I would yeah. like to see, I would like to see how it might be intertwined. Uh, intertwined? You use this word, yeah, intertwined, intertwined, into yeah. any process and to see it intertwined in the process, different processes. It would be interesting to see how it works in different situations. 
Well, that's one oh. thing is we're, we're ongoing, developing more and more training. There is, you know, be developing the, the you know, quick introductory video. We have actually an eight hour training already that people can watch. Uh, and so going forward, we have uh, every Saturday, we'll have these empathy circles. So you're welcome to join those. If you have suggestion, if you have some topics you want to hold online, we're, we're here to facilitate them. You know, we'll create more training material to be added to the hub and we're kind of open, you know, to work and see how we can continue collaborating. And we have our local groups. Carolina will be uh, working in Poland. We have our local uh, Berkeley uh, Bay Area XR group that we're working with. And uh, so, so that- Those yeah. Saturday meetings are at, I think, 6 p.m. Uh, of UK time. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then we also have a facilitators training on Saturdays uh, after. So we start at 10 a.m. Pacific, two hours, have a half hour break, and there's a two hour facilitators training and, and there's links to all that. So yeah, so that's that's kind of the gist. I want to keep us on time here too, if there's any might be a good I, spot. I'd just like to say before we go, I really enjoyed meeting you all and I love mm -hmm. what and I, I'm here to support you if you if that if I can in some way so I'm just scared we didn't let uh, our guest talk much <laughs> feel like no, some we did. Talk. <laughs> some yeah, we're talking too much and we can see if there's any follow-up meetings as well you know to take next steps Sam or Paul if you have ideas or Indra about uh, next steps let us know for yeah, my mind is exploding with possibilities. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm like, curious of it. <laughs> yeah, that settle a little bit. Okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe if we could go around and everyone could say one word before we go, I'd just like to hear from everybody something. Very grateful. Okay. Thank you. I just start to watch uh, a lot of uh, video clips from UK, from your uh, XR UK, uh, among them um, podcast made by Paul. And I'm really curious what you will do with that tool. <laughs> uh, warmth. Excited inspiration. <laughs> Tony. Yes. Yeah, I'm feeling uh, increasing confidence. I'm not sure. Lots of things. <laughs> um, encouraged, warmth, excited, connected, co a bit confused. Um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, again, just really, really nice to have that, that feeling that comes from meeting new people and realizing this such, uh, I don't know, intelligence and commonality and it's, it's very nourishing. Thank you. Thank you all. Mm. Paul? Sorry, I'm being a bit cheeky. Can I ask Antonia, um, we didn't hear where you were from and, um, uh, what your role in XR is, I, I'm curious. Yeah, I'm. Thanks, I'm really curious. I missed. I didn't hear your, any of you guys either, so uh, I really want to know too. <clears throat> uh, I'm. Um, I'm someone who doesn't really like to speak first. <laughs> I'm. Um, I'm in London in Hackney, um, which is a pretty big uh, group, um, but I'm part of the de-escalation and um, non-violent communication group and um, also doing performance stuff, actions and um, regen, doing quite, quite, try, I'm trying to introduce regen into everything, all sorts of things. Yeah, yeah. So quite a bit. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry for being 
do you want to put your email into the chat box and then you, you can maybe join some of our conversations? I'd love to, thank you, yeah. There's also the uh, Google Doc that we have, her emails there. Okay, yes, 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 so, thank you. And the rest of our emails, contact infos there. So, okay, well, great. Well, thanks everyone and we'll keep the ball rolling. Thank you. Keep the empathy oh. growing, <laughs> the movement and the... Okay. Thank you so much. I just have a safe chat. Thanks, guys. And I'll, post a, and I'll post a yeah, video, too, and I'll send you an email with the link to the video.